On the 7th of July 2012, the Olympic flame arrived in the heart of the county, symbolizing an era of togetherness and excellence that will have a profound and lasting legacy on our communities. This is the story of how London 2012 is inspiring Cambridgeshire. Music festivals, stage lights, photographs, dancers, young people, music, designers, drinks, tents, boys, smiles, whistling, birds chilling, mad dancing, no problems, no fighting, no flies, no mess, no stress, no litter, no party poopers, no laziness, no smells, no kiss and tells, just music, festivals, flowers, diamonds, freestylers, artists, kissing, hugs, community. Summersham's been totally inspired by the whole Olympics and we were very excited to get our Community Games t-shirts and bunting and banners. That was a really exciting moment because we felt it wasn't just our community doing their little sports event, it, it's kind of part of the whole thing and that's been great. Well, one of the good things about physical activity for children and for adults is it gives people an opportunity to get together socially and to do things as a community and we absolutely know what people do, how people choose to live their lifestyles is very much influenced by what's going on in the community around them. Residents from towns and villages across the county have been celebrating the Olympics in their own way through carnivals, parades and fun days. We've got a lot of work taking place in the city with communities so that they will be part of the celebration. So we've got uh, a very extensive project which is being run through Same Sky called Field of Dreams and that's involving a huge range of uh, artists and schools and young people and they will come together on the day that the flame arrives in Cambridge and they'll be part of the, the huge celebration. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Today I'm working with the DAWN project at the Women's Resource Centre in Cambridge. We're making big willow structures, butterflies and big flowers and we're going to do quite a few of them. <laughs> Well, I'm at Litchfield Hall and uh, we're working and making um, sort of some small creations which will be part of a bigger art installation on Parker's piece. I've enjoyed the company and also the ideas. I'm just doing a uh, sky really, some stars and the uh, moon and uh, maybe put a, an Olympic torch on there. It's good to get down here and uh, mix with people. The wide-ranging community groups and schools came together on the main stage at the big weekend in a spectacular parade of lanterns, flags and puppets. The four different colours symbolise the north, south, east and west of the city. We've wanted to use this year to capitalise on the enthusiasm um, generated by the Olympics and the excitement. We've been working on a festival called Chance to Dance which fits into our Get Back Into programme and that is working with local dance organisations to organise taster events and workshops in different forms of dance. Forever Active is very much working with the older generation in the city and we're very keen that we provide as many opportunities for people over the age of 50 to take part in, in sport and physical activity. Olympic dust has really sprinkled all over the city, we feel now, especially since all the countdown days, encouraging people and getting people excited about the Olympics.
the Olympic torch is carried through Mill Road. It's really neat to see so many different cultures and everybody's here for the same reason, so kind of neat. It's like, it's just a lovely atmosphere. Crowds gather on Parker's Piece to celebrate its arrival during the big weekend celebrations. We want to thank you guys, the people of Cambridge, your mode to shine, and boy, have you guys shone bright. Make some noise, Cambridge, it's your moment! Now I'm a diverse mind, my thoughts flow free Tepidly tickling, tantalising all to see From our blend spices and aromas from our streets Where you can taste the different cultures in everything you eat That grows through villages, towns, cities and counties Where slang runs wild through the power of speech proudly Colours integrate and forge new colour charts Like taste buds ferment from the fused culinary arts A melting pot, a cauldron, a frying pan, an oven Where race, taste and sound make a unity undiscovered In these little pockets culture thrives imperviously But only when the sun comes out can you see the real diversity Living Sport is the county sports partnership um, and we're responsible for delivering a number of the Olympic legacy programs on behalf of Sport England and we're here today at the School Games Plus which is a program for engaging young people across all of the, the school years um, in a variety of competitive sporting activities We've got a lot of young people with, with disabilities here today, but actually um, sport can reflect from different parts of the county, different ages, different ethnic backgrounds. It's just a great way of bringing people together. So yeah, sport I think can do so much and that's why I'm passionate about sport and that's why we, we, we love organising events like this. This year we've also had the inclusion within the opening ceremony of the um, Striking Together for Gold group and there's an opportunity for young people to have a go at some of the percussion instruments during the course of the day. And we also have a sporting champion with us today, for Lindsay Keeble from England Netball, who's going around and talking to the children, which is really nice for them. Oh, it's a fantastic event. It's just so encouraging to see so many athletes from all different walks of life to participate in sport, to actually find a, a sport that is suitable for them and that they can participate at a really good high standard. It's so competitive, it's unreal and so enthusiastic, it's brilliant. It's important for people like me to take this, so, but like if they want to be an athlete when they're older, they, they know what, to, what you've got to do to train and all that. You can learn new things about how to get fit and you can meet some really nice people. Oh, today's just awesome. It's so great to see these young people participating in sports, the excitement, meeting new people, making new friends, and that's all through sports. I enjoyed it the most doing running, and I have a souvenir. That's the first souvenir. It's such a fantastic day, and, and, and we enjoy organising it, and long may we continue to do so. Get in there, guys! Yes! Two weeks of Paralympic sports opportunities were offered to young people with and without disabilities throughout Cambridgeshire. The two-week Parasport campaign culminated in a celebration to welcome the Paralympic Lantern to Netherhall Sports Centre. But what you will see over the next 10 days of competition are extraordinary performances and I implore you to look beyond the disability. This is the new generation and we hope and I believe that they will inspire a new generation. For me, the Paralympics are different from the Olympic Games in that there is so much about human endeavor to, to celebrate and, um, and to inspire everybody. Oh. 
So you get inspired when you find something new, when you try something you never thought you could do. So go and be the you you want to be, not just the you that you think others want to see. Because there's more to life than walking idly by and just letting things be. There is so much left for our eyes still to see. But yeah, at times inspiration can be lacking. But it ain't going to be found by sitting back and slacking. So start making things happen. You've got to find that passion, that spark, that star in the dark. Stand up and make your mark. Because it's in all of you. So let it out and show the whole world what you can do. And when you do, you'll feel it true. It's inspiration. Stageworks is an educational facility for training young and aspiring dancers, uh, actors and singers. We've been doing a dance for the Olympic torch going through Cambridge. We're doing a ballet and a contemporary kind of mixture, mixtures of moves and loads of different mixtures of styles. these ribbons in it and they're more or less the same colours as the Olympic colours. We do many things in it such as like the little ones do things like skiing and things which also kind of represent things from the Olympics. It's really enjoyable to be able to be doing something you love with the people that you love. And it's an experience that you could never imagine, it's so fun. I feel really like honoured to be part of it. Dance Offensive were awarded an Olympics Inspire Mark for the Beat Project, an inclusive performance project engaging young people in dance through sport. Dance Offensive performed their Olympics Inspire routine at various venues throughout the county. Supported by the striking Together for Gold percussion group, they entertained the 40,000 plus people on Parker's Peace awaiting the Olympic torch arrival. The dance tent at the big weekend gave individuals within the troupe a chance to showcase their talents, inspiring younger generations. Members of the public were invited to learn and partake in a flash mob routine of Michael Jackson's thriller to an unsuspecting crowd. Throughout the county, schools learnt new dance styles and practice routines. Children from Ramsey Junior School learnt how to molly dance. It's basically like jogging, but you keep your foot and you do it twice. The music is quite lively, so you move a lot, you're doing it with a lot of people, your friends, and that just makes it all the more fun, really. We're going to be molly dancing in Cambridge when the Olympic torch comes, and also in London at the U Dance in the Festival Hall. Groups and organisations across the county have been inspired by the Olympic Games in a variety of unique and inventive ways. At the Cambridge University Botanical Garden, experts, volunteers and members of the public raced to identify as many species as possible. Wow, what a fantastic insect hunting day at speed. The You Can Too All Ability Cycling Project saw the establishment of an all-inclusive club where people with and without disabilities can cycle together as part of their community. Students on the ideal course at Impington Sixth Form College are making a film where the Olympics take place in outer space. Roll camera. Action. Great dodging already. You really wouldn't want to get hit with one of those. There's some wonderful moves here. I mean, they're just missing the flames. Oh, and he's hit. Crikey, that's really got to sting. Looks like I won. This is uh, called Yes You Can, and this is uh, a relay project inspired by the Olympics that basically is all about getting people to recycle more metals. Going from St Ives to Cambridge to Ely to Welney through March, Whittlesea and then Peterborough, so it's going all across the county. 
action. Students from the Cambridge International School enter the Super 8 mm Film Challenge. We don't know what it looked like at all and um, it's going to be really interesting to see how it turned out. I think it went uh, superb. I think uh, everybody's very pleased with the results and I think all the film technically they are, they are very, very good. The experience of working in a team to come up with an idea and to realise it in a short time, I think it's perfect. Very creative task. A splendid, very clear winner for the gold. It is number 10 by Medina Takush. Oh, it was fantastic. I was really proud of all the children because it's such a difficult exercise to do, shooting on Super 8. And, you know, the average age in there is 11, 12. The Hunt and Darton Cafe blended art with the everyday in a fully functioning cafe in the heart of Cambridge. The King's School Brass Ensemble practiced for their big weekend performance. A dance duet from Bodyworks joins them for their final rendition. Students from Sawston Village College rehearse their percussion piece for the big weekend. The world record for the most triangles to be struck at one time was smashed when 574 triangles were played at the Striking Together for Gold concert. Young people from Centre 33 try their hand at karate. Cambridge Regional College celebrate the Olympics with a family fun and sports day. Various sites around Cambridgeshire join the Bandstand Marathon. Cambridge Library awards the children who partook in the Summer Reading Challenge. The Summer Reading Challenge um, is a project which is part of the Cultural Olympiad and it's all about inspiring young people to come along, try new things in, in their library and find out what we have. The kids definitely have that association between getting a medal and, and, an, and a really big achievement that's been recognised. It's really good. I especially like the gold medals. Are they real medals? More than 600 cyclists set off from Jesus Green in Cambridge to raise money for various local charities. The big bike ride was an active and fun day that encouraged families to cycle together. Kettle's Yard is a Cambridge-based venue for all the bells. Thousands of bells ring for three minutes throughout the country. There was a whole range of people joining in a very joyous celebration start to the Games. Denny Abbey Farmland Museum hosts a unique Farmland Olympics fun day. And children from Linton Infant School prepare for their vibrant and colourful Olympic parade. We've been making an Olympic tour. The Olympic torch arrives in Huntingdon. This is culture where C stands for colony, where modesty and honesty is held high like its policy. And U stands for unity. United we stand as instinct civilizations try so hard not to crash land. And L stands for language, where appreciated articulation is studied hard for and not granted. And T stands for time. Times can be easy, simple or hard, but we all try to enjoy the ride and U is still the same, where R means revolution, where every believer thinks that God has a solid solution. And last but not least, E means energy, whether it's beats of bongo drums or beats from sirens of the A14. This is culture.
Walk Cambridge is a walking tours programme designed to showcase the very best sporting and cultural landmarks of the city. One of the key cultural venues featured in Walk Cambridge is the Museum of Classical Archaeology. Here the story of the Classical Olympics is told through selected plaster casts of the collection. The Fitzwilliam Museum was awarded the Olympic Inspire Mark for the Search for Immortality, Tomb Treasures of Han China. This exhibition is the first ever to focus on the Han period of ancient China. The Olympic torch has come from Beijing to London and this exhibition is China's cultural contribution to the cultural Olympiad here. We've had an organisation called Chinese Families Together which have come and worked with us on developing their own guide for young people to the exhibition and put together a booklet. We've also had a group called Jump Cuts and they are using this exhibition and the things in it as the beginning for a documentary which looks at the spirit of the emperor. It's been really interesting to see what the beliefs they have in China actually are and how they vary and how they're similar to the ones that we may or may not believe. Live Arts Collective East were awarded an Olympics Inspire Mark for Vanishing Point, a video trail made by Leslie Hill, screened in a series of miniature makeshift cinemas fashioned from toys and found objects by Chris Dobrovolsky. The Olympics makes sport accessible and of interest to a wider group of people. It does the same thing for art as well. Just starting to reach new audiences, people who wouldn't ordinarily go to an art gallery, for example. And in this instance, it's obviously people who just happen to be wandering through the woods. How Like an Angel in Ely Cathedral, which was extraordinary as Australian acrobats worked with Ufagellini, extraordinary British music, um, in a show that took people's breath away. And the education programme has been to over 90% of the schools in the area and has had a whole host of um, benefits. In this project, called The Worldwide and Wonderful Day, year groups from seven Cambridge schools work with different artists and explore the wider world around them. You can learn a lot of new things that you think you can't do when you can. Obviously with the forthcoming Olympics, children will become aware of other countries and so to have an insight into some of the, the cultures of these countries will of course give a wider context to the whole Olympics. Through sharing, we get to understand a bit more about each other and through that, together as a group we learn to make a better world for today and for the future. The Paralympic Lantern arrives in Wisbeach. Today's Paralympic Flame event, it's a, it's a way of celebrating the Paralympics in, in Finland. The point about sport is it's good for people, it's good for your heart, good for your soul, and that's true of people of all ability. Celebrating diversity, celebrating the fact that sport is available to all is really important. Bringing it into Wisbeach is because of Jodie Cundy, and Jodie Cundy has been an absolute amazing athlete. Um, through his history in, in sport. No way. It can't be possible. It happens to lots of people, but am I ready for this yet? I made it through the heat. I'm sure I'd be happy if I lost in the finals. Wouldn't I? Maybe. But that didn't happen. It's strange. Overwhelming. Exciting. Blissful. Life-changing. Success. Cambridgeshire Competes is a partnership between museums and sports centres. It explores the tangible and hidden history of our county's connections to the past and future Olympic and Paralympic Games. We've collected together a whole series of photographs of the ones to watch across the county during the Olympics and Paralympics. 
It's quite a daunting experience and it's a very unique experience. You know, you've got an audience of 80,000 spectators and, you know, 6 billion watching worldwide and there's such a sort of celebratory atmosphere around it. For hockey, the Olympic Games is the, the highest point anyway and then if you can say that you're the best at those Olympic Games then yeah, it's obviously a huge honour. And the fact that it's, a, that it's in London, it's a home Olympics, once in a lifetime opportunity. If it lives up to anything that I'm imagining, which I'm expecting it to go beyond, it will be the best experience of my life. I'm Georgina Billen, I live in Cambridge, uh, I study at Hills Road and I play goalball for Great Britain. Goalball is a sport designed especially for blind and visually impaired people. You play it on a volleyball sized court, you have nine metre goals down either end and you have three aside. so you all wear blindfolds so it's a level playing field and have a heavy ball with bells in it which you throw from your end to the opposite end to try and score in their goal and when it's returned you have to use your body throw yourself across the floor and try and block your goal. When I found out I was selected for the Olympics, I was so excited. It felt amazing. It was kind of pretty surreal as well, actually, because it's something you've been focused on for so long and been hoping for, that when it actually happens, you really have to pinch yourself. I'm really looking forward to the first moment that I walk out into the, uh, into the arena and have the whole audience cheer because it just gives me butterflies even thinking about it. Hi, I'm Dan Keatons, I'm 22 years old and I'm a male artistic gymnast. Hi, I'm Lewis Smith, I'm a British gymnast and uh, I specialise in the pommel horse. I think my greatest achievements and my proudest moments um, came at the Olympic Games in 2008 in Beijing. Um, it was quite a surreal experience being just 19 years old um, and then going there and winning that bronze medal has just been absolutely amazing, it's, you know, it's changed my life. It's unbelievable. It's it's hard to explain into words the, the feeling you get, you know, when you're actually out there competing for your country in in the Olympic Games. You ha you have to have a lot of determination and dedication. You know, you have to you have to turn up to every session. You know, trying your hardest. I think any any top athlete trained at the top of their game um, is no stranger to hard work and sacrifice and all those commitments that they have to make. And if you can combine that with enjoying yourself, then uh, you're on for a winner. You know, I don't want to put added pressure on myself by saying I've got to get a certain medal or listening to all the hype around the media. I've just got to go there and do what I do best, which is just compete. And I just want to be the best gymnast I can be. I'm Jodie Candy. I was born with a deformed foot, which was amputated when I was three. Um, I learned how to swim, uh, enjoyed swimming, got on the Great Britain team, won world championship titles, won Paralympic titles, retired from swimming, took up cycling and also world championships in cycling as well as Paralympic gold medals. Well London was my fifth Paralympic Games and it was the best Paralympics I've ever been to. I've never known anything like it. The venues were amazing, the crowds were out of this world and they, they were the bit that really made the Games. Uh, in the velodrome we were riding round, the, the, when a GB rider was on track you're talking nearly 120 decibels of volume and even if I race in front of a full house it's never going to be the same as that home crowd at a Paralympics. The uh, media interest in the Paralympics was absolutely massive and I was so glad to be part of it and I hope from now on that, that that's now put Paralympics on the map.
Paralympic lantern arrives in Ely. Words nearly fail me, but it's truly a great honour. It's going to be very, very fulfilling and rewarding. I don't normally see this many people, and it's brought everybody out, all ages, which is a good thing. It's what Ely needs. It's hand-me-down clothes, graffiti, was taught in schools and theatre shows. The unfinished symphony, headlines, obituaries, the missed last-minute penalty and lost opportunities. Picasso, Damien Hurst and your child's first potato print. It's my mum, Mrs Walkinshaw and the footprints I left on Glastonbury's mud floor. The rushed apology, the lingering late-night phone call. Our Facebook timelines like symbols etched on ancient cave walls. And history repeats with each of us spinning through space a little more afraid than we care to admit, leaving traces that scream, I was here. And this is our legacy. The Cambridgeshire ICT service asked students from local schools to record the Olympic torch relay as they saw it. Their short film captured the sights and sounds of the two days as the torch travelled through Cambridgeshire, St Ives and Huntington from a child's perspective. What's the paper? Can I see the Olympic torch? Inspired by the Olympic torch relay, students from Bottisham, Swaffham Bolbeck, Swaffham Prior, and Burwell Primary Schools partake in their own inter schools torch relay. Oh, I feel great after doing that. So it's really exciting when I started and I feel even more excited now. I'm an Olympic ambassador from the school and ambassadors help the school with the Olympic Games sports and tell everyone to be healthy and do lots of fun and active games. If you watch the Olympic torch and uh, the Olympic Games, if you watch people that you really like, you might be able to grow up and be like them and then you might end up competing in the Olympic Games yourself. The legacy of the Olympics not only lies in the inspiration of younger generations to engage in sports, arts and to aim high, but in the multitude of ways people of all ages and abilities can and have been helped through associated training and volunteering programmes. Team East for Skills was a three-year, £2 million programme aimed at helping unemployed people get into work through volunteering. It was run through a unique consortium of arts and sports organisations working together across the east of England and reached over 1,540 people with and without disabilities over this period. Screen Team is something that we started in 2010 and it's just finishing now, September 2012. It's got two strands really. One of them is mounting really large scale and ambitious outdoor screening events across the east of England. And then complementary to that is we train up a team of young volunteers to work behind the scenes on these events. Green Team is an opportunity for, for 18 to 25 year olds to do a, an intensive three day training programme. You get to meet a lot of people that are interested in the same things you are. Um, it's been really, really good. The programme screen team has been funded by Legacy Trust, who are a charity who work to develop a, a long and lasting legacy from the Olympics and Paralympics this year. It's all been inspired by uh, the Olympic aspiration to develop oneself, to share joys and passions and, and to reach one's personal best. I'd say it's a really fun um, confidence booster for anyone who's interested in getting into the film industry. I wouldn't know where to go if I wanted to look into outdoor film exhibition or anything and this has been really I think a really good idea to sort of get people involved. 
I think it's really useful for young people to be to have the opportunity to be in contact with people who are already working in the industry in this way. It's been it's been nice to meet uh, like-minded people and, uh, and you know face new challenges. Today we're doing event steward training, which is really exciting because we've got the Cambridge Big Weekend and Torch Relay coming up. The Volunteering at Events project, which is across the county, funded by Cambridge County Council until September, is looking at the legacy, looking at people volunteering in their local communities. It would be nice to see the people that volunteer at the Big Weekend going on, getting involved in other events, helping their communities. All volunteers seem to be a big family and it, it just promotes you as a person that you're willing to go out that extra mile just to help out. I'm actually a games maker so I'm actually volunteering at the Paralympics. I normally volunteer at the London Transport Museum. There's no such thing as an ordinary day, let's just say that. It's a big thing for Cambridge so I just want to be part of it really. It's a bit of history in the making. We were very keen to put ourselves forward to host the Olympic torch relay. When we were successful, that's really enabled us to go up you know, several gears, really, um, and to work with local communities. The facility that we train in is just you know, one of the best. We've got excellent coaches and excellent support. And I think all of that hard work and the backing from Cambridgeshire has, um, has produced one of the best clubs in the country. Yeah, so it's a real hot spot in terms of getting kids involved. It's, it's a nice environment to be a part of, so very privileged. Any young person that wishes to be successful in any sport, I would say give everything a go. Because I didn't know that I was good at goalball, I didn't even know what goalball was until I had a go at it. Just keep on trying. You've just got to keep pushing yourself and keep going. There's the elite athletes and there's the aspiring athletes, but also there's the families, there's the young people, there's older people. Sport can be for everyone. Well, I hope that people will be inspired um, to take up some form of sport, get involved, think about the things that they and their families can do because we know that if people do that, then they'll feel healthier, they'll feel good, it'll be great for families. That's the sort of legacy that we'd want the Olympics to leave. I'm sure that the Olympics will inspire our communities, and if it encourages more people to engage in sport, participate, try something out that they've never thought about before, you know, keep people more active, fitter, healthier, that's exactly what we want from the Olympics, and I'm certain that's going to be the case. Not everybody can be Olympian gold medalist, not everybody can be a Paralympian gold medalist, but actually everybody can do something that stretches themselves in one way or another, and I think that's what the spirit of the Olympics is about. For me, the legacy is people continuing to enjoy in the amazingly rich cultural offer that um, the East has.